Okay, let's start off with some forward and back running. So you start here, you're running forward and running back. And then punches. Keep your hands up, keep your feet moving. Next one is shuffle. Um, either side to side or front to back, depending on how your space is. Make sure that you keep your hands up. If you want to throw some punches while you're doing it, that's fine. And knees. Other side. Make sure you keep the standing knee bent. You're doing more work that way. As long as you're doing the warm up, you may as well get as much work out of it as possible. And ladder steps. kicks front side back Okay, check your pulse. If you're not at at least 120, do that two more times. So run front and back, punches, shuffle, knees, ladder steps, kicks. Make sure you, at least twice, three times is better. Make sure your pulse is up to 120 and then come back to me to stretch. Okay, when you're ready to stretch, so I think I'm gonna angle this down a little bit so that you can see me if I'm on the floor instead of just seeing the empty ceiling. Reach up. And you're not just putting your arms up here, but you're pushing them towards the ceiling. And then reach for the floor. Over to one side, grab your ankle, pull your chest to your knee. Keep your chin up. Down to side stretch. You want to have both heels on the floor here. Well, you might not want to have both heels on the floor, but I want you to have both heels on the floor. Turn, stretch your hip flexor. And then straighten out your legs. All your toes are facing in the same direction. Both knees are straight, chin is up. Back is flat, reach down over the front leg, chest toward your knee. You should feel this primarily in the hamstring of the front leg. Come to the center, toes straight forward, push your knees up. Other side, grab your ankle. And then down to the side stretch.
turn, stretch your hip flexor. Straighten out your legs. Knees straight, back flat, chin up, chest down towards your front knee. Have a seat. Put the bottoms of your feet together. Okay, if you can put the bottoms of your feet together and still keep your back flat here, not rounded like that, go ahead and put both hands on your knees. If when you let go, it rounds your back, take one elbow or one arm, tuck it there to support your back straight and just use your hand to pulse one, elbow, one knee down. side. Okay, put one foot out, pull the other foot across. If you can pull this one in and still keep both butt cheeks on the floor, pull it in. If pulling this one in gets one hip up off the floor, keep it straight out. This knee is in, opposite elbow is on the outside of the knee and you're pushing across. And then same thing on the other side. And then come up to a wide squat. Um, heels on the floor. Put your elbows inside your knees. Push your knees out and rock back and forth. And put your hands flat on the floor and straighten out your legs. Okay, um, I'm going to show you three exercises, walk you through them, explain what I want, and then you're going to do two times through 10 of each exercise. So the first one is inchworm push-ups. When you do inchworm push-ups, you start here, you put your hands down on the floor, you walk them out. Okay, you can either stay here on your toes or drop to your knees. In either case, your back is flat. So none of this and none of this. Keep your elbows tucked into your body. One push up, walk your hands all the way back. Okay, so down, hands out, one push up, and all the way back. Okay, those are called inchworm push ups because you're doing like an inchworm. Um, next one is a completely straight body sit up. Come flat on my back, legs are straight, arms are straight up towards the ceiling. They're not going behind my head, they start here. I sit up. So my arms are now straight still to the ceiling and back down. And then we've got one more. The last one is a squat and lunge. So when you do a squat, you want your feet. People will tell you shoulder width apart. My shoulders are only about that wide apart. That's way too narrow for me to squat. It's got more to do with how, how long your legs are and how flexible they are. So I got mine out about here. Toes need to be straight forward. And then when you squat down, you don't want to bring your butt back. You want your shoulders to stay over your hips. Okay, at the very least, you need to come here. If you can get all the way down, that's even better. When you do your lunge, you're gonna step back and you're gonna step far enough back that you have a 90 degree angle here so that your knee is over your ankle. You don't wanna be here with your knee out past your ankle over your toes because that's gonna stress your knee. Okay, so you start here, you step out, squat, in, Step back and lunge. Step out, squat, in, back, lunge. Squat, and this one side is one. So squat, lunge, that's one. Squat,
squat, lunge. That's two. Okay, so I want you to do inchworm push-ups, straight body sit-ups, and squat and lunge. 10 of each, 10 sets, and then come to back to me and we're gonna work on the week, the lesson for the week. Okay, this month you're getting your strike for excellence. So we're gonna do a drill with excellence in kicking. We're gonna start off with ground toss kicks. Actually, we're gonna do ground toss kicks. We're gonna start off doing them holding onto a chair because I want you to focus on the, the correct parts of the round toss kick. So standing foot is pointing away from the target, chambering knee is pointing towards the target. One, two, three, four, five. Then I'm gonna do doubles. One, two, three, four, five. And then on the other side, okay, I'm gonna do three on each leg. One, on each, each count, two, three, four, five. Okay, then you're gonna get rid of your chair. <clears throat> And we're gonna do that same thing. One kick, then two kicks, then three kicks. And we're working on excellence, which means if you get sloppy, if your standing foot's not turned, if you're tipping over, if you're leaning this way or that way, that's not excellent, you need to stop. Okay, so I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna do one roundhouse kick. Then I'm gonna do two roundhouse kicks. Then I'm gonna do three roundhouse kicks. Then four roundhouse kicks. Okay, then you're gonna slide up and do that. So I'm gonna slide up one kick. Okay, then same thing on the other side. Okay, then I'm gonna slide up and do two kicks. And now the fact that you need to balance for two kicks, you still need to focus on excellence. So this, the, the, the kick still needs to be technically correct. So I slide up, the standing foot's turning that way. My knee faces the target, I don't have to kick high. One, two. Slide up, one, two. Slide up. Okay, then same thing on the other side. And then I'm gonna do it with three. And then the other side. Okay, I want you to keep on doing that. Up to four kicks, up to five kicks, six kicks, until you can't do any more kicks. Then I need you to go find somebody who works in, who lives in your house with you or works in your, in your work with you if you're doing this in your office at work and ask them to offer your target. Target can be their hand, it can be a focus pad, it can be a piece of paper held up this way if they're worried about getting hit. And you're gonna, they're gonna hold it up and you're gonna kick one then two, then three, okay, until you fail, okay, this would be failing, okay, that's the fact that you're still standing on your foot kicking, that doesn't count, you have to hold your form for it to count, then you hand the target to your, the partner hands the target to you, and you hold it, while they do the same thing until they fail, the goal is to be able to do more standing without tipping over than your partner can. Okay, so you're getting your strike this month for excellence and if you're in the kids class, 
you're getting your star for courage. So what I'm looking for for courage, um, it, teens and adults, you can do this if you want to too, but for kids, is to have somebody videotape you doing as many roundhouse kicks in a row as you can, and then post it either on social media or to the McCoy's Action Karate page. Okay, except for Chill Song Solo, you guys have seen all of you four. This month they're working on excellence, and um, I want you to think about excellence comes from all the other things that we worked on. Power, where are you generating your power from? What do your stances look like? How are you rotating your indexes, your chambers? Um, but it also, in order to be excellent, you have to have it burned into your muscle memory and you gotta be able to do the form, which is a way to practice self-defense, even while you're doing something else. So you have to be able to throw something in or add something or have something happen that's not gonna screw you up doing your form. Okay, so we're gonna start off with basic form one. And I'm gonna, every time I'm in triple chassis, I'm gonna, the next move, I'm gonna do a back leg front kick to land in triple chassis. So I'm gonna do basic form one. One, two. One, two. One, two, three, four. One, two. There's not really enough room for its stance there. One, two. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two. Okay, if that messed with your brain, do it again, or do basic form two the same way. Okay, then we're gonna do chills on your row. I'm not gonna do it exactly the same, because if we do them all exactly the same, then there's no challenge. So for chills on your row, we're gonna start here, and first move, we're gonna look, block, block, cut. Pull in, knee, push them away, front kick. Punch, punch, that's what it would be punch, punch here. Look, turn, block, block, cut. Pull in, knee, push them away, front kick. Push, punch, punch. Okay, come to the center, block, one, two, three. Next move is a cat stance. So from the cat stance on the next count, I'm just going to shift my weight back. Front kick, step and punch. Same thing on the other side. One, shift my weight back, step and punch. One. Okay, every place here now that you're doing a kick, you're going to do three of them. One, two, three. Yes, I'm messing with your balance. That's what I'm trying to do. Cat stance. So you're going to do a front kick into the next move. Cat stance. Front kick into the next move. Okay, ping on E done. Let's see. Um, I'm just gonna throw some random kicks in there. I'm gonna talk to you while I do it, and I want you, after you've done it with me, to throw some other random stuff in and chat with somebody while you're doing it. So we're gonna start here. We're in a cat stance. Okay, same thing. Except I'll do it from the second cat stance this time. Okay, here we're working on the machine gun kicks that we did at the very beginning. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing with the kicks here. One, two, three, four, five. 
One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so if you're a gup, you're done. I have two more forms to do with the, with the, with the tungsten or black belts. If you're a gup, I want you to do your form again, and then I want you to take whatever your form was from last cycle and do the same thing. Add in kicks somewhere, either extra kicks between moves or multiples of kicks when you do them. Okay, Junte has all sorts of options for screwing with your brain when we do this. Okay, so if you're a first degree black belt, your form is Junte. Crescent in, crescent out, crescent in, crescent out, crescent in, low block. Okay, that is just, there's no kicks here, that's okay. There's plenty coming, I'll mess with you in a minute. Okay, let's do at least three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Two, three, just because we can, and back. Okay, um, chill sun, four. I'm not gonna mess with because not all of you are all the way to the end of the form yet. So we'll start at the beginning, and we're gonna go pretty far to the end. I don't do 540s, even when I was younger, 540s was a challenge, but I'm really old now, so they're not happening. So I will explain to you what the 540 is supposed to look like, and I will show you what I'm doing there instead. So Chilsung Salo, um, Seven Stars in the Spirit, Seven Spiritual Ways, Stage 4. Okay, now what's supposed to happen here is I'm going to turn towards the back and I'm blocking, I'm doing this towards the back, I'm turning so you can see. I'm doing a high block with my arm and a check with my leg. So what's supposed to happen here is I'm going to do a high block with my arm and a check with my leg. Then I'm going to come around and launch into the air and fly all the way around and do a crescent kick into my hand. Okay, if you can do that, that is awesome. I can't. So what I'm going to do instead I was here. I'm going to come here. I'm going to throw a high block with this hand. I'm going to turn. Someone's here. I'm going to chop into the side of their neck, kick them in the head, and then do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to block. If you're doing it as it's written, it's a block and a check, and you come around and kick. The way that I'm doing it is block, step, chop the neck, kick, and double low block. Okay, that's as far as we're going on that. Um, we have a few more phrases. We'll be done by the end of the month. So the fourth month, we'll have to polish it up and make it pretty if you have questions. Okay, three self-defenses. The first one is from the white belt curriculum. Okay, white belt self-defenses are not meant to knock to wipe somebody out. It's just meant to slow down somebody who's being a nudge. 
Okay, so the first one that we're doing, somebody's going to grab your wrist. You're going to step back, okay? If they have this wrist and I step back with this foot, nothing happens. But if they have this wrist and I step back with this foot, two things happen. Either I pull them off balance or they let go. In either case, that works. Okay, so what I'm going to do is as I step back, I'm going to chamber this hand to do a high walk and slide down and slam it into their wrist. I'm going to slam my arm into their wrist. Okay, so I'm here, they grab, they pull, I step back, block, and then violence. Whatever, there's, there's not a right or wrong answer on the violence. Do you have to do a punch there? Do you have to do a kick? But you have to do something to get away so that they don't grab you again. Okay, so here, they grab, step back, low block, and then get away. Okay, next one that we're gonna do is from the orange and blue belt curriculum. It's called Shiyanagi. In the kids' class, we call it chicken wing. I don't know why. Years ago, we used to call it bat wing because we didn't know any better. And then somewhere along the line, somebody discovered it had a Japanese name, which makes sense because it comes from judo. It's called Shiyanagi. There's lots of ways to do it. We're going to do it right now off a punch. Okay, so somebody, and actually, I, I really, I have nobody to throw here. If you take class from me outside, we're not throwing anybody anyway. The important parts are get out of the way and do damage. The throw is just gratuitous violence at the end. Okay, so the damage that we're gonna do, this person steps in, they're stepping in with their right foot and throwing a punch with their right hand. I'll do this in the other direction too. I'm gonna get out of the way and block. I'm gonna parry. My parry comes from underneath my block. It's the back of my hand, it slides down their arm and then it grabs this part of their hand. I turn their arm up. So their elbow is facing down. Elbows bend this way very happily. They don't want to bend that way. So I've got their hand. I pull and I'm gonna take my bicep and slam it into their elbow. Okay, after that, Shinagi, you turn so that your shoulder blade to shoulder blade, you're behind them and you break their balance and throw. But I don't have anybody to throw and I don't know if you have anybody to throw to practice in your house, but to get out of the way and defend yourself is far more important. So I'm also going to show you from the other direction. Somebody's coming at you with a punch. You get out of the way, you block, parry, slide down, grab the wrist. Make sure their arm is turned so that their elbow is, the point of their elbow is facing down. Break their elbow. Okay, now this works really well if the person who's attacking you is the same height as you or they're shorter because you have some leverage here. As you rotate, you lift in to break that elbow. But if they're a lot taller than you, you're, the, main, the most of your power is right here. And once you get up here, you've lost most of it. So that ultimately what you can do is block, parry, grab their arm and pull it down towards your hip and then turn and slam your, your upper arm, your tricep into their elbow. Okay, that way I'm, I have all the power of my rotate, the power of my hips rotating into that break. Like I said, if I'm working with somebody who's my height, I have the rotation and the backup mass here to break. But if they're taller than me, I don't have it there. I block, parry, grab, pull down, turn in. So there's my power, and this part of my arm is hitting their elbow. Okay, one more self-defense. This one is from the advanced curriculum, green, brown, red. It's called Aikido knife. This does not work for somebody stabbing you like this. This is based on somebody coming running at you with a knife. I do not want to see this. Okay, that's a good way to either get your hands cut open or to get stabbed, to stab yourself in the gut or both. Okay, somebody's coming at you with a knife. That's the important part, okay? So they got their knife in their right hand and they're coming at me and I get out of the way. And they're coming at me and I get out of the way. Okay, that's the self-defense. The rest of it is violence, okay? So as they come at me, I get out of the way. I take this hand, I drop it over their elbow so their arm is tight to my ribs and I keep turning, which swings them around and puts huge stress on their elbow. And I'm gonna grab both blades of their hand. Okay, in order for this to be a keto, it has to be a big circle. I'm gonna to talk to you about that in a second. 
You're going to tuck your left foot behind and you're going to make a big circle and you are going to rip their shoulder out of their socket. Okay. You do not want to ever practice with anyone like that because you will tear their rotator cuff. Okay. It, it, don't do it. So if you're going to do this with someone to practice, you can go really fast through here. You can go really fast to here. And then you're going to go really, really slow. Okay. You are judged when you're at your black belt test on if you're a good uki. But it is Tori, the person who's throwing it, it's Tori's responsibility not to injure uki. Okay. So you never do that. If someone has your arm and they pull across this way and it's tight, you can protect your shoulder. But here there is no way to protect your shoulder. Okay, so stay attack, you get out of the way, you grab, you make the wrist lock, you step behind, and then you slowly come around. Okay, with a partner. Then when you're practicing, if you want to practice the whole thing at speed, once you understand how to get their hand, that's fine. But don't do it to anybody like that. Okay, we're going to start working on a chuck form. There is no required form for chucks. There's required techniques. We've been working on those techniques. Up and down, up and down with spins, catches, figure eights, triangles, okay? But there's no form. However, a lot of times when you come to your black belt test, you'll stand up and those, the panel will say, show us something with your chucks. And there's nothing worse than standing next to someone who's on the tournament team who does this flying spinning chuck form and all you know how to do is this. Okay, so I'm going to teach you a form. Very, it's a basic form. You can add to it. You can do whatever you want with it. It works with one hand chuck or two chucks and it's putting together the, com this, the techniques and the combinations that we worked on in class. So it starts here with the single chuck. Here, you're going to block to your right shoulder, turn to the right corner, two down and ups, reach under, pull it back out, Bring it to the left shoulder, turn to the left corner, two down and ups. Actually, I left out the triangle. So let's do it again here. Pull it to the shoulder. One, two, two triangles. Now, reach underneath, grab, pull it to your left shoulder, turn to the left corner, two down and ups, two triangles. Underneath, grab, Pull it to your right shoulder, four figure eights, one, two, three, four, catch. Okay, so I'll do it going the other way. Starts in the center, block to your right shoulder corner, two down and ups, two triangles, catch underneath. Bring it back to your left shoulder, two down and ups, two triangles, catch. Bring it back to the right shoulder, four figure eights, catch. If you're having trouble with the catch, what usually makes the catch work better is not to try to catch, okay? If you're here and you're trying to catch it, you can't catch it. I just do a figure eight when I get here. It's the moment, I'm just gonna open my fingers and the momentum carries it in to where it needs to be. My right hand does that much more intelligently than my left hand does. And then you're gonna do the same form with two chucks. Okay, obviously you can't do the shoulder block with two chucks. So we start here. Bring two shoulders, face the first corner. Two down and ups, two sets of triangles. Other corner, two down and ups, two sets of triangles. To the center, four figure eights, and catch. And I'll do it going the other way. Bring it to your shoulders, right corner, two down and ups, two sets of uh, triangles. Other corner, two down and up, two sets of triangles. Four figure eights. One, two, three, four, catch. Okay, when I say two sets of triangles, you're going, how come she's doing four? Because I'm this is I'm considering a set, both sides. That's one and that's two. Okay, so down ups, triangles, figure eights, shoulder blocks. Those are all things that we've been practicing the last two months. And we're just putting them together in an organized manner so it looks like a form. Okay, um, colored belt, red belt, sword form. 
Actually, if you're in the tungsten oak class and you're brown, you're also doing this one. Okay, we, we're gonna review this one more time, and then next week, there's an, this is the old, this is the required part of the form. There's an option. I keep having people come up to me going, so when are you going to teach us the other part? The other part is not required. The other part is an extra. So when I look at people and if I look at a class, I look around a class and I go, okay, everybody's got it. They're handling the sword correctly. Then I'll show you the other part. Okay, but so what we're going to do now today, and I'm going to go in this direction so you can follow along with me. We're going to do this form and I want you to focus we're working on excellence I want you to focus on your stances I want you to focus on the angle of your sword I want you to focus on the direction of your feet are moving when you're spinning okay that all has to be there in order for this form to be done correctly before we add options to it okay so we start here if you can I don't know can you see my feet I don't have the balls of my foot on the floor I have my feet flat on the floor I don't know if everybody's feet bend like that but that's the goal okay I start here I come up onto my right knee, and my sword, I'm turning this way so you can see it, comes straight out. It's right off my shoulder. It's not out here. I see a lot of this. It's right here, and the business end is leading. Okay, so I'm going to come back to here. I see an attacker on that side. I'm going to block. Look at my block. See my block? It's covered my head. This is not covered my head. This is not covered my head. It has to be here. So I block. And I turn and I cut that person, sh uh, shoulder to hip. I'm going to look over my right shoulder. Somebody's coming. There's no index. I'm just going to drag my right foot back and do the same block. Be conscious of the angle of your sword and that it's high enough over your head to actually be blocking. Rotate, cut shoulder to hip. Then I'm going to look to the front. Somebody's coming. Block. You can should be able to see in the, in the video. My sword is higher than my head, angled from my hands down to the tip. Rotating cut. Now, my sword is going to do an orbit over my head. My, um, my right foot's going to stay where it is. I'm pivoting on it. My left foot is coming around, and my feet are apart. Okay? A lot of people are bringing their feet together. The next move is a roll and step. If your feet are together, the roll and step doesn't work. So I'm going to bring my sword up, leave the tip where it is, but wind my hand back. My right foot is going to step into my left one. Left hand grabs the sword. Left foot steps back out to the front of the room. I cut straight across at head height. I'm going to do an, an, an orbit. Cut straight across at head height again. I'm going to do another orbit. I'm just going to skip forward, do a horse dance, come up under the chin, and cut someone's chin. Then I'm going to do another roll, another rolling step. So right foot comes in. Left foot comes out. I cut almost straight now. We'll talk about that in a second. Then I'm going to step to front stance or triple chassis and cut again. Okay, when you cut straight down, cutting straight down onto the top of someone's head, even with a really sharp sword, you're going to cut a hole, but you're not, the chances are that you're not going to make it through there. I can think of one or two people that have a perfect sword might cut through someone's skull, but skulls are really hard. You're not going to cut through the skull. So you're cutting down, but why don't you think about the target being the side of the neck, collarbone, okay? You can cut through the collarbone. And then when you do this last move, don't be like this. That's like offering your head as a target. You're leaning forward from your hips, but your, back, your shoulders are over your hips and your head is back. Okay, so practice that. Practice that. Focus on those details, and next week we'll start adding the options. Okay, black belt sword form. Um, we're going to review what we did and add a few more moves. So it starts here, business side is facing you, going on the assumption that it's in a scabbard. Up, switch, I'm grabbing the blade here because there's supposed to be a scabbard. Push it in, bow, um, step forward, draw it out of the scabbard. Bring it back, left knee down, set your scabbard down, up, to the back. Right foot, left foot, right foot. Pull back, crane stance and stab. Basai chassis, basai chassis, left foot steps back, cut across, cut across, block. Make sure that you're blocking the not sharp end. If you block the sharp end, it's not going to be useful. Front kick, pump front kick, block again. I'm in triangle chassis, my feet, but my body's facing to the side. Turn. Someone's attacking my foot. I get my foot out of the way. Crane stance. This hand is here. Pull it back to my right hip. Chingle chassis. Strike. 
turn, bas vai chassi. So I'm pulling the sword in against me, step to the side, left jungle chassi and stab. Pull it back in, come all the way around to the front, left foot again, jungle chassi and stab. I'm gonna step back just so I don't run into the, uh, the light here. Um, I am going to pull back to cat stance, sword is up, step to jungle chassi and cut down and across. Come to cat stance again, cut up and across. Plant my weight on my left foot, pivot around it. I'm gonna to come to that, to the other side in a right jingle chassi and cut down. Step forward to left, cat stance again, cut up. And then I'm going to do the same block I did before, except before my hand was here and now it's here. Okay, practice that and next week we'll add some more.